Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mojo GPU puzzle series. I'm excited to walk you through puzzle two, Zip. In this puzzle, we're taking our GPU programming skills to the next level by learning how to work with multiple input arrays simultaneously. If you haven't yet completed puzzle one, I'd recommend starting there first, as we'll be building on those concepts today. By the end of this tutorial, you'll understand some key concepts, like processing multiple input arrays in parallel, how to handle more than one input source in a single GPU kernel, element-wise operations with multiple inputs, as performing operations that combine corresponding elements from different arrays. Thread to data mapping across arrays, that's how each thread accesses the same index position across multiple arrays, and memory access patterns with multiple arrays, understanding how threads coordinate reads from multiple memory locations. These skills are fundamental because real-world GPU programming almost always involves processing multiple data sources together. Let's define some key terms we'll be using. First, element-wise operation, an operation that applies the same computation to corresponding elements of arrays. In our case, we're adding element 0 of array A to element 0 of array B, element 1 to element 1, and so on. The specific operation we're performing is called the zip operation because we're kind of pairing up elements like a zipper. Next is unsafe pointer. This is Mojo's way of giving us direct access to the memory on a GPU. We now have three pointers, one for our output array and two for our input arrays. Those are A and B. Each pointer lets us read or write to specific memory addresses. Thread index.x. As we learned in puzzle one, this gives each thread its unique identifier, which we'll use to determine which element each thread should process across all three arrays. Parallel memory access. This is when multiple threads read or write to different memory locations simultaneously. In this puzzle, all threads will be reading from arrays A and B and writing to output array at the same time. All right, let's understand what we're building. The zip operation is one of the most fundamental patterns in parallel computing. Imagine you have two lists of numbers. Array A has 0, 1, 2, and 3, and array B has 0, 1, 2, and 3. And you want to add them together to get 0, 2, 4, and 6. Here's how it works on the GPU. Thread 0 handles position 0. That reads A index 0 and gets 0. Reads B index 0 and gets 0. Adds 0 and 0. That's still 0. And writes that to output element zero. Then thread one reads element one of A and B and writes that to element one of the output. This continues for threads two and three. The efficiency of GPU programming is that all four threads do this work at the same time. There's no waiting, no taking turns. Each thread independently gets its thread ID, uses that ID as an index, reads from both input arrays at that index, adds those values, and writes the result to the output array. Think of it like an assembly line where four workers, those are the threads, each handle one position, all working simultaneously. This is how GPUs achieve massive speedups by doing many simple operations in parallel. Next, let's look at the code structure. I'll open up the file at problems, p2, p2.mojo. From memory, we'll import unsafe pointer. From GPU, we'll import thread index, block dimension, block index. And from GPU host, we'll import device context. Our imports bring in the GPU functionality we need. Notice we're importing thread index, which we'll use to get the thread ID. Next, we'll set up our configuration. Size is equal to four, blocks per grid is one, threads per block equal to size, and the D type we're using is float32. Our configuration is simple. We have four elements, so we're using four threads in a single block. We're working with 32-bit floating point numbers. And here's our kernel function. Notice it takes three parameters now. Output, where we'll write our results, a, which is our first input array, and B, which is our second input array. We've already got I gets thread index.x, which gives us our thread's unique index. Now we need to complete the operation. Looking at the main function, we can see how the data is set up. Both arrays are initialized with values 0, 1, 2, and 3, so our expected output is 0, 2, 4, and 6. The kernel is launched with the enqueue function method. Notice here we're passing three pointers to our kernel, one for output and two for the inputs. All right, let's solve this puzzle. We need to write one line that reads from array A at position I, reads from array B at position I, adds them together, and stores the result in output. Let me break down what's happening. A brackets I. Here we're using array indexing with square brackets to access the element of A at position I. Similarly, we read from array B at the same position. We add those two values together, and we store the result back into the output array at position I. The beauty of this code is its simplicity. Each thread independently executes the exact same line of code, but with different values of i. 
So thread zero computes zero plus zero equals zero. Thread one computes one plus one equals two and so on. This is called SIMD, single instruction multiple data. All threads execute the same instruction, but operate on different data. Now let's test our solution. In the terminal, I'll run pixie run p02. Here's the output, and perfect. Our output matches the expected result. Let's verify. Position zero, zero plus zero equals zero. Position one, one plus one equals two. Position two, two plus two equals four. Position three, three plus three equals six. All four threads successfully processed their assigned elements in parallel, and we got the correct answer. Let's review what we learned. Processing multiple input arrays in parallel, we successfully handled two input arrays, A and B, simultaneously in our kernel. Element-wise operations with multiple inputs. We performed addition on corresponding elements from both arrays. Thread to data mapping across arrays. Each thread used its ID to access the same index position across all three arrays. And memory access patterns with multiple arrays. We saw how threads coordinate reads from multiple memory locations without interfering with each other. This zip pattern is incredibly common in GPU programming. You'll use it for vector addition, element-wise multiplication, applying functions to pair data, and much more. Great work completing Puzzle 2. You now understand how to work with multiple input arrays on the GPU. In Puzzle 3, we'll explore a different access pattern called guard. We'll, we'll learn how to handle threads that don't have work to do. This is crucial for real-world scenarios where your data size doesn't perfectly match your thread count. If you found this helpful, please subscribe to stay updated on the new GPU puzzle tutorials in the series. And if you have questions or want to discuss GPU programming, head over to the modular forum. I'll link that in the description below. Keep coding, and I'll see you in the next puzzle.